Hello and welcome to your Working Crack. And, uh, you know, it's uh, this video again, except I actually made it this time. If you don't know, uh, last week I published a video talking about how I horrifically failed at making this video, which was building a space station with a space shuttle, and uh, more on that later. But yes, I finally actually done it. So now the uh, point of this video is, yeah, it's a space station being built using each uh, spatial variant. And by that I mean I proposed a variant uh, for a spatial, such as, uh, well first the uh, space spatial as it flew, but on the other launch pad you could see the uh, shuttle C, which uh, again will be discussed later. But yeah, you've already seen this intro cinematic in the previous video. In fact, you've seen most of this first launch in the uh, previous video. And again, Mechship Ascent Guidance decided not to ignite the engines. Don't know why. And it will only do that after a few seconds. And this will actually cause me to not use Mechship Ascent Guidance for the rest of the video. Yeah, most of the launches you see today will actually be flown by hand. Though I will be using the uh, Mechship uh, Smart ASS. There's absolutely no other way to pronounce that. And uh, yeah, you, uh, you do not need to correct me in the comments. Anyways, first launch of Spatial Atlantis. Hey, at least I hope I got the correct word here. But yeah, it's a space shuttle as it was historically standard external tank. I decided to go with normal orange, and I believe it. I believe this is the mod. Like, okay, so there is a three different variants available for the spatial external tank in oranges. I believe this is the mildly weight reduced one. They're about that. I believe there are. Basically three variants, and also I guess four if you can count uh, STS-1 and uh, white paint. But uh, yeah, the external tank actually went through a bunch of revisions. Anyways, uh, moving from the external tank to the SRBs, we just jettisoned them. And we're continuing on into orbit. I'm aiming for a final orbit of uh, 90 kilometers by 90 kilometers. And yeah, this is a uh, purple scale real solar system if you're wondering about it. Well, this is Earth, but... I'm already in space, already in such in space by 80 kilometers. That's why. And I guess I can talk more about the mods. Orbiter is obviously from Sock, and I'm using oranges for not only just the external tank, but also some of the advanced, uh, just some of the different variants also use a uh, Sock. And there's also even a Photon Corp for the SRBs. Anyways, we now adjust in the external tank. And we can open up the payload bay. And we can reveal the core module of the space station. It uses some Habitat parts combined with just some other missing parts from other mods. It's not really based on anything. I kind of just wanted... Oh, it has the functionality of... Uh, it's like a mod... It's like a uh, Russian space station module. Uh, which... Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce right now because I would definitely butcher that. But uh, yeah, it has uh, propellant, like it has propellant and engines on it, so it uh, can be uh, self-sufficient on its own. But it uses the United States uh, parts. Uh, yeah, I really wasn't sure where I was going with this, but I think it turned out fine. Anyways, with that deployed, we can already begin to head towards reentry, and uh, I will completely miss landing on this. As you can see, we're still pretty high in the atmosphere as we approach uh, Florida. And we're going to completely uh, miss, and uh, pretty soon you should see that uh, by the time we were there in the atmosphere, that uh, transition will occur now. Yeah, by the time we're there in the atmosphere, the uh, closest landmass to us is uh, currently a Cuba. So, yeah, not ideal. And yeah, I'll end up just uh, landing uh, somewhere off the coast of, uh, just, well, just somewhere off, I guess, not quite in the Gulf of Mexico, I believe we're more reaching Caribbean Sea now. Yeah, going for a somewhat a decent uh, splashdown. Yeah, so far, a zero of one National Orbiter successfully landed, and that is a race that will continue. Anyways, uh, now, the uh, shuttle scene you saw earlier. This is now being flown by hand, again using the Smart ASS. And 
and yeah, shall see you. Unless it was a concept that you remove the sound of risk associated with the spatial and the risk for the spatial that came from the fact it had to carry a crew for every launch. So I shall see you. Just simply remove the crew. And with that, you can also make the vehicle expendable, and you end up with a very cursed looking vehicle. I guess it does somewhat to resemble some of the Energia concepts. And I guess it really shouldn't even be concepts since this is how Energia flew historically. Of course, there was a, and the main engines were on the core. I'm not sure I'm not talking about Energia. Yeah, um, I feel like the main. Th this was not planned, but. But the main problem with the chassis is it's still using the expensive RS-25 engines. It's now just expanding them. Which I... I, I mean, do you what SLS, SLS does? This is essentially SLS, but worse. Which is... I mean, that's all... I mean, SLS is already pretty bad. Anyways, going back to mission occurring. We are currently running something into orbit. And uh, yeah, I'm doing my standard rendezvous procedure. I made a, tutor made a tutorial for this a while ago. And yeah, we're aiming for a slightly higher orbit since uh, we are F ahead of the uh, vehicle, uh, ahead of the target vehicle. There we go, separating from the tank. And uh, getting our, uh, just our intersect uh, set up. And uh, oh, our rendezvous is going to involve an unintentional air brake maneuver. Now, it was slightly into the atmosphere. And we'll see that later. Right now, we're doing our uh, maneuver. Okay, this is actually was the uh, first time I ever used a smart ASS. And yeah, I'm skipping it. I'm skipping a lot of these missions since. Uh, there's the four of them to cover. Also, I guess while well, not much is happening, we're just doing unintentional air braking. I can talk about how, okay, the next video I do will not be a Kerbal Space Program video, as outlined in the end of my hiatus. So, I'll do uh, like a one Minecraft video for every two on KSP videos. Technically, it's been three KSP videos since the last Minecraft video. But uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted you to be aware of that. I'm now not, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm referring to the viewers as singular now. Anyways, I have no idea where that was going. But yes, a rendezvous. And fairly soon I'll detach the payload, which as you can see, is a habitation module. It actually does include an inflatable module, which, well, here's the thing, this video will actually not be the completion of the space station since time constraints that led to two launches not occurring. Which means, again, I'll, I'll be able to uh, make another video out of this. I'll probably have to throw in some ex extra stuff since I, I'm definitely like overusing this now. Anyways, that's uh, now docked. And uh, yeah, at some later point we'll inflate the uh, module, uh, which again, not actually occurring in this video. Yeah, successful docking. I'm not gonna bother using all arms, I'm just using some mock plant based tugs. And now shall see is expendable, so we can just deorbit it and have it burn up in the atmosphere. Of course, we had to re enter over the extremely bright surface, that is, you see her. Sahara Desert below us. However, yeah, actually part of the vehicle will, will survive re-entry. And, as you can see, due to its slight aerodynamic properties... Oh. Actually survive collision. Which was unintentional, I'm actually not really sure why that occurred since I believe it was traveling faster than its, uh, like, impact, like, destruction of lost team. Yeah, we can recover that. Anyways, on to our next launch. And this is with extended SRVs. Where it's uh, using, instead of a four-segment SRVs, five-segment SRVs. 
And now, this is actually with Orbiter or Columbia. And uh, you may have uh, noticed that I don't have the proper black, uh, just black tiles on the wings. For some reason, part variant won't work for me. But uh, yeah, we're just, we're now using a uh, booster's more similar to that of the SLS, which gives us greater payload capacity, which I failed to make proper use of, as you'll see. Now there is going to be oh, an event will occur, which uh, oh, you're going to see that uh, during SRB separation coming up pretty soon. Uh, we suffer damage to wings, which um. <laughs> There's something to say about how I was just happened to be using Shaw Columbia for this. But uh, yeah, one of the control surfaces on one of the wings has been damaged. Which I mean... Is that really irony since... Anyway, um, let's move on from that before some... Yeah, let's move on from that. Science actually will not have that much of a negative impact. So when we insert into orbit, we can open up the panel bay, revealing that all we have is an airlock module. Yeah, now I kind of just randomly assigned uh, just the payloads to uh, to shuttles, and so yeah, we're not really making full use of our payload capacity. Except I really messed up my rendezvous for this. Well, it's more I messed up the launcher rendezvous. We we never really uh, used the external tank uh, once in orbit. If we do eventually make it to the uh, target space station, then we can deploy our module, which for some reason doesn't have any. Uh, I cannot control it essentially, and I believe that I initially believe this is because I did not put an antenna on this, and for some reason the probe core suddenly does not have an antenna on, like just suddenly has lost the ability to communicate, and uh, that leads to me like just doing this, and I. Yeah, I took the antenna off the orbiter and put it on the module. That um, doesn't work because I only now realize that a solar, a solar storm was occurring. But we can time warp through that, and we can then successfully dock the module. Which you can see happening here. There we go. I didn't bother taking the antenna off of it, which means that there's a unnecessary antenna on this uh, space station, which again might be removed at a later point. Anyways, we can now uh, do our wretch. And I believe it's around now that I realize we are missing the aileron. And of course, uh, I completely uh, failed at uh, getting anywhere near the, uh, just the antenna landing site. And we're actually landing, I believe, in Venezuela. So again, uh, 0 out of 2 uh, successful shot landings right now, and that trend will continue. Now, of course, we actually do have a fairly safe landing in this random field. So with that, that already brings us to the last launch of the video, with Spatial Endeavor, again being flown mainly, and you might immediately notice that something's off the external tank. This is the Hammerhead shell proposal, where instead of having a payload in the payload bay, as often a, a payload would take up 100% of space, whilst that being less than 100% of the available mass, it could be carried into orbit. You can instead put the payload in a fairing on top of the external tank, and say so you can carry a larger, larger payload, and then use up uh, all the available mass to be launched into orbit. Of course, it does look a bit strange. But uh, ignoring that, we can uh, have the payload fairing deploy, which arguably makes it look stranger. And uh, yeah, we can now continue orbit, and the payload there is a very large uh, scientific module. I'm using uh, some uh, stock like space station parts, uh, redux uh, parts, uh, or that uh, laboratory and even uh, the module.
And yeah, we'll actually again continue to use the uh, external tank and the main engines since they're having to carry uh, just more mass than is uh, usual for a just normal launch. And during one of our many uh, maneuvers, one of the uh, orbital maneuvering engines just explodes. But in the end, we do even eventually make it to the space station and can successfully dock. And after that is successful, we can uh, and we can uh, first detach the external tank and extend the solar panels of that module, and then prepare for the orbit burn, like closing up the payload bay and uh, retracting the antenna. And uh, you might wonder why I didn't remove the antenna I accidentally placed on the space station. That's because I didn't have more propellant for an EVA. I'm not joking with that. I somehow managed to use up 100% of the mono propellant on the orbiter. So we can re enter, and uh, except for an explosion of a structural piece for some reason. And yeah, since the uh, orbiter was damaged, I didn't even bother trying to get a correct re entry path. And we're going to splash down somewhere in the South Atlantic. So yeah, none of the uh, orbiter landings are successful. I mean, it's a Fairly soft slash down. I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and goodbye.